As a narcissist, do I ever struggle now? Like, are there the same things that I used to do still like a struggle at times now? Is it stuff that I still find myself slipping back into? A lot of times people want to ask and they want to know like, hey, what do you actually struggle with now? What does this actually look like? And how is it easier? How is it harder? Is it better being self-aware? Is it not being better self-aware? All these different pieces, a lot of times people ask me and I want to kind of just compile some of them into a video to be able to explain some of them. If you guys are new here and you're not sure what's going on, I'm a narcissist. My name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, change, and development. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, the creator of the NARC app, and your guide in the 45-day clarity challenge to help you work systematically through breaking free from being with a toxic person. How to be able to rewire your mindset of being in a relationship with a narcissist. Oftentimes it's really confusing for people, so we try to break it down in a systematic process to get you clarity and get you breaking free from that mindset, that addictive piece that keeps pulling you back to the toxic person. Well, someone was asking the other day, they were like, what about you? Like, what do you actually struggle with now? What do you do to be able to work on it? Well, one of the things I do to work on it, besides like regular every week uh, uh, therapy, is actually like working on myself every single day. Part of that starts early in the morning when I wake up, when I do self-care, when I drink my greens, when I do stretches, but then when I meditate, when I spend 20 minutes a day, at least in the morning, sometimes 20 minutes later in the afternoon, doing meditation and like going through this motion of trying to learn more about myself and trying to work on myself to grow, heal, and change, okay? Part of what I do with meditation is sitting and thinking. Part of it is mantra, part of it is music. Depends on the day, depends on what's going on, depends on the direction that I'm headed. But the goal is that I'm actually putting that intentional effort into myself every single day. Then I go into something called stacking. It's something that I've learned from Wake Up Warrior, something that we use inside the Thriver community like every single day of helping people actually get to the truth, to the clarity of the situation. It's the same process that we use to break people out of a toxic relationship because it's helping them rewire their mindset. And so for me, it's incredibly helpful because it's helping me rewire the story that I tell myself that puts me in a place of like, oh, I'm a victim. Like, oh, I'm, it's not that bad. All that kind of stuff. It helps rewire me back to the aspect of truth. The truth is the only thing that can set you free as a survivor. The truth is the only thing that a narcissist could be set free by is the truth of what they're willing to be truthful and honest about themselves. There's been many times I've had to get extremely honest about myself, who I am, what's actually happened, what's going on. One of the hardest moments for me like in my life, like coming to the realization and starting to dive in and learn more about it was when I was actually going through Psychopath Free. I was going through Psychopath Free and ran into the grooming section. When I read the grooming section, I was like, wait a second, this is what I've done. This is what I've done to people. This is how I've interacted with people. And the story that I was telling myself a lot of times was this aspect of like, this is how I showed love. This is how I connected with people. This is how like we were great together, et cetera, et cetera, because of all this stuff that I was doing, how I was grooming, how I was getting a person to fall in love with me, like different pieces like that. And so it all like came to head of like, oh, like this is actually what's been happening. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I have to take the time and the intentional effort to actually work on myself, to actually change the thought process, to help like ground me and guide me back to the truth of the situation. Because that's the only thing that's actually going to set me free. It's the only thing that's going to continue to help me move towards the direction I want to go. The change that I want to be versus how I was showing up. So how do I actually show up now? There's a big difference in what I was doing versus what I am doing now. But that doesn't mean everything's just magically gone or magically disappeared. If you're with a narcissist and instantly everything changes, know that it's manipulation. It is a long, hard battle to start to change the things that have become habits and addictions for such a long period of time. And when that person says like, oh, I went to a couple therapy sessions, I'm good. Yeah, it's not going to cut it. So I've been an individual with one single therapist every single week for over a year now. And before that, I did about six months of EMDR. And I'm going to continue doing therapy because I know it helps. But I'm at this place with therapy where my therapist also knows, like she, she mentioned when I was trying to go through the sole purpose intensive of like who I actually am, what I'm actually doing. She's like, I know I can start to trust you to actually deal with the shit that you're going through and like, let me know because I'll write it all out. I'll put it in like a stack of this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm feeling. Then I'll share it with her. And then we start talking about it. Then we start working over it, start going through it to be able to get clarity of what's actually going on in the direction I need to go. But do I still struggle with it? Yeah, 100%. 
Just because I'm not in that still abusive state doesn't mean I still don't have tendencies or ideas or thoughts or especially like the mental aspect of like how it runs. So that's why I have to work on grounding and reprogramming myself like every single day, like rewiring the story that I want to tell. So give you an example. The other day, Kayla and I and Sophia, we were at the outlets. We were at the outlets and we were in a store. We were going through and she was picking out some stuff to try on. I was picking out some stuff to try on and came together and we were talking about it. She tried stuff on. I tried stuff on. And then came back together and then we're talking about it. And like there's this like piece that's like underlying of like, wait a second. Like she's not sure if she should get the items. I'm not sure if I should get the items. There's this piece that's getting activated between the two of us of a little bit of like guilt and shame of like spending money. Okay, so this is both like activated, it's like base level. Then we have Sophia who's struggling to be able to engage and to be able to just uh, calm down in one sense inside the store. Like she's like, we're at the outlets. I wanna get out, I wanna run around, I wanna go all over the place, but I wanna get out of the store. We're like, wait a second, like we're not done, we're almost done. But what it did is it produced this like tension between the two of us because there was a third person that was triggering us at the same time, produced this tension. When this tension happens, the hard piece there is then it starts to invoke a couple different things. Many of you already know as parents, like when you have a child that acts out, like that can invoke a lot of like shame and guilt in front of other people, like image, okay? Like image isn't looking good, right? And so then we try to be able to hide it, change it, anything like that. For me in the moment, it was like a a moment of like trying to connect with my wife, Kayla. Like, hey, like this is what's going on. We're both getting frustrated a little bit because we're both like wanting to actually like make the move to get the things we wanna get, but both don't want to because of the story of guilt and shame of going through like the money aspect and getting triggered with the daughter at the same time. It's like, but all these things are happening all at the same time, okay? What's that, what ends up going on is like, I get frustrated to the place where I'm just like, you know, forget it, I'll just put everything back, okay? So like instant kind of like pulling back. And Caleb matches that at the same time. She's like, sure, like I'll just put everything back too. So it produces this like disconnect, this like pull away. That then produces more frustration in me because I see what I did. Like in that moment, like I chose up, I chose not to show up as someone who is actually being transparent and honest of like, hey, this is what I'm struggling with right now. I'm struggling. Like I mentioned it as far as like, hey, we're not communicating right now. But it wasn't like in a kind way. It was just like, we're really not communicating. Like I was just frustrated because everything was triggering going on. So then I'm like, okay, like I'm going to pull back my stuff. Like I'm going to go put it away. She's going to put it away. Walked out of the store. Like we're both frustrated. She's like, we can just go home. And I was like, wait, like let's talk about it. I was frustrated. She was frustrated and got over to the side. We both like vented and like got it out and like started to work through it. But it is a process. It was like a time. And the difference is like it wasn't abusive in nature. Like the difference is actually being able to walk through these conversations, walk through this conflict that happens and walk out with more connection and walk out with more like clarity of like, wait a second, like here's what was actually going on. Now in the moment it is super hard to be able to just say like, hey, in this moment, I'm getting activated by shame because I'm not being heard in this moment. So I'm just going to hide what I actually want or what I'm trying to communicate. I'll just go do what I wanna go do. Like that's base level, like what's actually going on there. But then it's this fight of like, how are we actually going to work through it? How are we going to continue to gauge? Because if we both just walked away and not said anything, not done anything, not revisited the conversation, then there would have been an awful thing because we're not actually helping move through it. So a piece of what I have to work on every single day is like that tendency. And like, feel it like all the time. Feel like all the time. It comes in waves. Like there's times where I don't feel it very much. Like there's times where it's like, it's very low, it's very subdued, okay? Give you another example. Where my office is, I've got a, a air conditioner, like a floor air conditioner or whatever. Um, and so it sits there, pipe runs out, you know, it uh, cools down the thing. Well, the other day, like she's like, it doesn't seem like it's cooling very well, okay? Instantly in my mind, it's like, I've noticed that it's not cooling very well. I haven't had the time to be able to look at it because right now I'm too busy. I haven't had X, Y, Z. And all of a sudden, there's like litany of things that wants to run through my head, bringing about shame. Of like, wait a second, like it's my fault, it's not cooling, like the the machine's probably gonna die because I haven't taken care of it, because I haven't checked the filter, I haven't hooked up the water hose, like whatever it might be, there's all these stories, right? And so if I don't take the time to actually work through those stories, they're going to eat me up. They're actually going to change my perspective and then all of a sudden, the air conditioner isn't the problem, it's my wife. Like that's how my mind will work. So then I have to guide it back and work on it, be like, hey, sorry, like, I know I need to work on that and that's something that just activated some stuff inside me. 
that I shouldn't have anything come out towards you. That's just stuff inside of me. See, we have to understand when a person is triggered, it is the responsibility of the person who is triggered to deal with their triggers. Because what you're going to have is you're going to have a narcissist that gets enough information that's going to tell you, you're triggering me. You need to fix you. You need to change you. Okay. Now there is a line of like, obviously don't like just piss people off, but that's what the narcissist is doing to you. Okay. But understanding like, Hey, if you're getting triggered by the narcissist, then we need to work on you. We need to work on your boundaries so that you don't let that person in and actually control your life anymore. We need to make sure that the narcissist isn't using the word saying, Hey, you're triggering me as a way of controlling you as a way of making you do something that you shouldn't do. You are responsible for the triggers that you have in your life. This is why we actually help people work through breaking the triggers, breaking the trauma bond, and getting rid of those things that control you. A little bit different video, but I want to just be able to share kind of stuff that's going on. If you're interested in breaking the triggers, like not having a trigger control you anymore, go to escapetoxicity.com, escapetoxicity.com. And from there, you can start to see how to break the triggers how to work through the things that we're actually doing, the things you do on a day-to-day -day basis that are triggering you or pulling you back to a toxic relationship. It's time to break free. It's time to escape the toxicity that you've been a part of.